Hi, my name is Dave Oaks, and today I want to talk about delegation. I would say about 80% of the managers and supervisors I see as I travel throughout the country don't delegate because they view it as an inconvenience rather than something that they should do to develop an employee. Uh, a few years ago, I did a seminar in western Kentucky for a group of supervisors, and this one gentleman stood up in the course of the class and said, when you become a boss, he said, your career is over with. I said, what are you talking about? When you become a boss, he said, it's not about you anymore, it's about your people. And I think many supervisors and managers view delegation as an inconvenience when really you should be doing it as a way to develop your folks. Now, there are definite barriers and benefits to delegating. I think some of the barriers to delegating that some supervisors would see is that it takes too much time. I mean, some of you that are watching this that supervise people have probably said, it's just easier to do it myself. Or some folks, they just fear a loss of control. Or maybe some people don't have people to delegate to, or they think their folks are all overworked. Now, granted, there are some people you're going to delegate to on a one-time basis, and some of the folks that you're going to delegate to actually want some more responsibilities and some more uh, authority on the job. Uh, and that leads me to the benefits. The benefits of delegating is that it can actually motivate an employee. As a matter of fact, there was a survey that I saw about a year ago, and they talked about what demotivates employees. Now, the interesting thing for managers and supervisors is they're always asking me when I do a leadership seminar, how do you motivate an employee? How do you want to get an employee to be a little bit better than they are? and they throw money at them, or there's a book out by Bob Nelson called 1001 Ways to Motivate Employees. And they've got some great ideas in there, but I think one of the great benefits of delegating to people is some folks like to have a little bit of authority. As a matter of fact, one of the things that some, some managers and supervisors do when they delegate is they micromanage people. And I don't know if you've ever been micromanaged before, but it's very frustrating, it's very demotivating, so give them a little bit of authority. Um, now, let me just say this. There are five things that a person can do uh, to be a good delegator. The steps are fairly easy. Uh, the first step is to give clear instructions when you delegate to people. I think the clear instructions when you delegate need to be written down. The, the thing that uh, is a, a little depressing to me as a motivational speaker sometimes is I was reading in a book and they said that the average person that you're talking to mind wanders every seven to nine seconds when you're talking to them. Now, those are small mind wanderings where I'm talking to you and I'm glancing at your wristwatch or looking at the pen as you're writing or maybe just looking out the window for a second. But there are some mind wandering that people do where they completely leave a building and they're gone for, it could be 30 seconds or a minute. I mean, how many times have you folks actually given somebody something to do and you were talking to the person, but they actually looked sort of brain dead. They're, you were talking to them, but there was no recognition in their eyes at all. That's probably because they were mind wandering. So when I talk about giving clear instructions to people, I don't mean you should be writing it down for the folks. I'm talking about the people that you're actually delegating to should, uh, can be writing it, should be writing it down. Now, let me ask you this. If you're giving somebody something to do and they work for you, can you actually make them write that down? Or should you suggest that they write that down? Because th there's different ways to delegate. There's actually three ways that you delegate. You can delegate down, which most managers and supervisors do, and that's when you're giving instructions to somebody that works for you. And they, you, you have to be nice about it, but they pretty much have to do what you say. Then there's delegating sideways, and that's when you're delegating to a coworker. And you can't really make a coworker do anything. You can only suggest it. Uh, I like to tell people, I don't know if you remember the show from the 1960s and 70s, but it was starring Monty Hall, and it was called Let's Make a Deal. The way you delegate sideways is you work with a coworker and you do each other favors. And then delegating up to your boss is not actually giving your boss something to do. When you delegate up to your boss, what you're doing is asking your boss to reprioritize your day. I'll be happy to do it. I mean, have you ever been overloaded with things at work where you had three things to do and they want them all done at the same time? How do you get them all done? Well, the best thing to do is go to your boss and ask him to reprioritize it, and that's called uh, delegating up. But as far as giving written instructions, I think if you are really a leader of a group of people, you're a manager or supervisor, I think you really can tell somebody, I want you to write this down. And it's not really a trust issue. I mean, it may be the fact that I'm worried that the person's going to get it. But you've got to admit, uh, when you write something down, I, read, I heard a guy, I was talking to a PhD in one of my seminars, he said, when you write something down, you're 85% more likely to remember it if you actually write something down. And that's really why I want folks to write it down. Not only because they're mind wandering, but because I'm sure that they're not going to get every single thing that I say. I mean, have you ever gone to a grocery store before driving home from work? You thought of five things that you need to get at the grocery store uh, when you get there. 
between your car and the store, somehow you forgot one of the items and you're standing there with four things in your cart and you cannot remember the fifth one. And you just thought about them a few seconds ago. But if you wrote those five things down and put them in your pocket or in a purse, you would have remembered all five of those things without writing any of them down. I mean, how many of you have driven home from work and you're about a block from your house at a stoplight and you can't remember how you got there? Now, do you ever stop and think to yourself, sometimes I'm beginning to lose my memory? And, you know, I found out from a guy that you don't really lose your memory when you get old. You just, you don't really lose your memory. You just lose your uh, train of thought every now and then. Uh, you uh, have so much on your mind, you can't remember things. I was asking the guy, well, how come I seem to have a worse memory than a young person does? And he said, because young people have less to remember than old folks do. But writing it down is a basic thing. It's a basic time management premise to be a little bit more organized. Now, the second thing I want you to do when you delegate to folks is I don't want you to micromanage people.